Okay, in this video we're going to solve the following system of linear congruences. So we have 4x is congruent to 5 mod 9 and we have 2x is congruent to 6 mod 20. So if you notice this setup is not exactly like the setup of the Ch Chinese remainder theorem. So what we have to do is manipulate this setup a little bit to start off and then put it in the form of the Chinese remainder theorem. Okay. Good, so um, let's get started. So we first notice that we need to solve 4x is congruent to 5 mod 9. So now luckily 4 is relatively prime to 9, which means this has a unique solution, and we can get that unique solution by multiplying both sides by the multiplicative inverse of 4 mod 9. So now we notice that 4 times 7 is equal to 28, and 28 is 1 mod 9, so that means 4 inverse is equal to 7 mod 9. So in other words, we can multiply both sides of this um, linear congruence by 7, and we'll be able to solve this. So that means x is congruent to 35 mod 9. So now 35 is 1 less than 36, so we can say that x is congruent to 8 mod 9. Good. So we've simplified 4x is congruent to 5 mod 9 down to x is congruent to 8 mod 9. Now we need to work on this 2x is congruent to 6 mod 20. So we notice that 2 is not um, invertible mod 20, but all three of these number, numbers are even, so we can take advantage of that. So we'll write this thing as 2x is congruent to 2 times 3 mod 2 times 10. And there was a result that I've proved earlier on the channel that if you have a setup like this, you can cancel the common factor from all three of these parts. So we can cancel this 2, and we're left with x is congruent to 3 mod 10. Good. So now we have a new system of uh, linear congruences to solve. We have reduced this to the following. Solve x is congruent to 8 mod 9 and x is congruent to 3 mod 10. So that won't be exactly the same as the original linear equivalence because we uh, don't have this mod 20, but we can take care of that at the very end. Okay, good. And this thing is set up to solve using the Chinese remainder theorem. So uh, let's do that. So we need to set capital N equal to the product 9 times 10, so 9 times 10, so that's 90, and then capital N1 will be 10, and then capital N2 will be 9. Good, so we have that. And then recall that we want to solve um, ni xi is congruent to 1 mod little ni. So these xi's are important to constructing the solution. So little n1 is 9 and little n2 is 10. So that means we want to solve 10 is congruent. So 10x1 needs to be congruent to 1 mod 9. But notice 10 is congruent to 1 mod 9, so that means we get x1 is congruent to 1 mod 9. Okay, so um, that's good. So the next thing we need to do is the following. So now we can write this as um, 9x2 is congruent to 1 mod 10. And we notice that 9 times 9 is 81, which is 1 mod 10, so that means x2 we can take to be 9. So we have x1 is 1 and x2 is 9. Okay, fantastic. Now we can go on to the next step of constructing our solution. So we want to set x equal to the sum of the xi, the ni, and the bi. So that's going to be x1, 1, times n1, which is 10, times b1, which is 8, 
plus x2, which is 9, times n2, which is 9, times um, b2, which is 3. Good. So now, notice that is going to give us 80 plus 81 times 3. So um, 81 times 3 is 243. Good. So we have 243. So that tells us that um, x is equal to 323. Good. But now we know by the Chinese remainder theorem that this should be unique modulo 90. So that means x is congruent to, so we need to reduce this mod 90. So 270 will be the closest. So that's 53. 53 mod um, 90. Good, so we have a unique solution mod 90, but um, we want to solve this maybe mod 180 because that's the product of these two. And so um, we can do that, and that means we have two solutions. We have x is congruent to 53 mod 180, and then we can add um, 90 to this, and we get also this is 143 mod 180. Good. So now we have these two solutions. So we have one solution um, that's unique mod 90 by this trick, but we have two solutions um, if we're looking at equivalence mod 180, which is the product of these two numbers. Okay, good. So this is the final solution.